There we go. That's a little bit more comfortable. Now not all of the your face. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Salutations. I'm Riley Arlick, and this is Tabletop Tips, where I give tips about tabletop stuff. Now, if you are watching this um, after the stream, when it is made into a video, I will provide... Oh, no, my cable is really stuck. Oh, no. Oh, oh hold on. Okay. okay. I will provide a uh, timestamp. I will provide a timestamp for when... Uh, my, oh, the BGM is too long. That's, that's a little bit better. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> of course, this, like I said, if you are watching this after the fact, I'll provide a timestamp for when things get really started so you can dive right into the action. Um, after I say, you know, hello to all the people that are joining me live, uh, Tia Kun and Padunk and everyone else, uh, now that the sound is fixed and everything's working, and we have Clip Studio Paint open and I have my tablet ready to go because. Uh, this isn't your typical video where I have a bunch of, uh, you know, editing software where I clip things together. This is a stream, because I like to stream. And, um, I figured what I would do is try to show off things in picture format. Uh, I have a bunch of, uh, of, of captures of various, uh, in Inquisitor things that I will show you. But, let's begin. Welcome to Tabletop Tips, uh... Inquisitor conversion tips. Okay, so this is going to be an introduction to what Inquisitors are, a little bit of the Warhammer 40k universe, and some ideas of models within Games Workshop that can be used for making your own Inquisitor. So the first question to answer is, what's an Inquisitor? An Inquisitor is a, uh, a, a person within the Imperium of Man in the 40k universe, the year 40,000 and up, um, that has an incredible level of authority, second only to the emperor himself, and the emperor of mankind isn't going anywhere. Um, so they are tasked with rooting out the mutant, the heretic, and the alien uh, in order to protect the Imperium from threats both in, within the Imperium and outside of the Imperium. There are three main branches of the Inquisition that are that are popular. Uh, let me uh, just kind of click through a little bit of this. Um, the first is the Ordo Hereticus, the Witch Hunters. And here we have a uh, Ordo Hereticus. Oh, no. <laughs> Bear with me for just one second. Uh, for some reason, my tablet is seeing both my screens, and I need to fix that. Very... Quickly, the pen, and then I go to mapping, and then I click on uh, screen area monitor one, and that should fix it. Yes, that fixed it. Great. Uh, okay, so the Ordo Hereticus are the witch hunters, affectionately called the witch hunters, and they are. Um, led by in inquisitors that are tasked with rooting out actual witches um, in some ways. People with psychic power that maybe shouldn't have it, or people that are trying to cause uh, evil cults to spring up around the Imperium. And they are aided uh, typically by the Sisters of Battle. The Sisters of Battle are the ecclesiarchy, the churches, the Imperial Church's own uh, military force because the uh, church cannot have men at arms, so they have women at arms. Uh, that's that's how that goes. The next branch is the Ordo Malleus, uh, led by inquisitors that are focused on hunting demons. These inquisitors tend inquisitors tend to be very secretive. Uh, after all, if you admit that there are demon hunters, then you admit that there are demons, and not a lot of the uh, Imperium needs to know about that. They don't need to worry about th those sorts of things. They are typically aided by the Grey Knights, uh, who are also very secretive and are specifically space marines that hunt demons. Um, so, again, 
if you admit that there are demon hunters, you admit that there are demons. And even the thought of there being demons is a dangerous thought for the regular population of the Imperium to have. Um, and that's why the, these Inquisitors do what they do. The final branch is the Ordo Xenos, the alien hunters. So most of the Imperium does know that there are aliens. And so you have Inquisitors that are focused on dealing with those alien threats, whether they are ravenous, uh, biologically created aliens that eat everything in their sight, or they are alien robots or alien elves or alien whatever else you, you want to think of. And they are typically aided by the Space Marines of the Death Watch, a, uh, an order of Space Marines that draws from uh, veterans from every chapter of Space Marines uh, to participate in the Death Watch and gain experience and, and lend their strength to the alien hunters, the Ordo Xenos. Now, within Games Workshop, the current way to get uh, the, the actual rules for playing with these models is currently in Psychic Awakening Pariah. Let me take this moment to say that I am not sponsored by Games Workshop in any way. Um, I don't make a single buck off of anything uh, when it comes to Games Workshop stuff. Um, or, or promoting it, so I'm, I'm not doing this for that. But for those of you that wish to use an Inquisitor in your games of Warhammer 40,000, uh, that's the book you need. Uh, the Pariah Psychic Awakening. It has options uh, to make uh, your Inquisitor a Psyker, someone who can use the warp, um, or to have a bunch of melee options like swords and axes and hammers and other things besides, um, and a bunch of ranged weapons as well flamethrowers, laser guns and plasma guns, bolt weapons and needle, needler pistols and a bunch of other things besides. Uh, this is where you find those rules is in Pariah um, currently. So this video is being recorded on, uh, what is it, May? May 11th, 2021. So this may change in the future. It could change as soon as next week. It could change next year. Who knows? But currently, uh, this is what we got as of recording this. And yes, that is a little dragon on the, uh, the Ordo Xenos uh, shoulder here. This is a creature known as Shang, and we're going to go over uh, some of these a little in a little bit more detail as we go. Um, so let's first talk about, in order to create your own Inquisitor, you kind of have to be aware of what the current Inquisitors look like. So let, let's look at a couple of those models and, and go through some of those. So these are models that are currently available, as far as I understand. Um, as of recording, uh, you can buy these from Games Workshop. This is Gregor Eisenhorn. He is an Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos, technically, even though he tends to uh, root out pretty much any uh, sort of heresy. And that's the thing about Inquisitors is that they tend to... They're looking out for any sort of heresy, not just within their, their purview. They're not just like, oh, that's an alien and I'm Ordo Hereticus. Oh, well, I don't, I'm a witch hunter. I'm just going to ignore those aliens because that's not part of my job. No, Inquisitors have a, a phenomenal amount of freedom in their job um, and will execute that according to their their whims. Uh, but you can see that Gregor is a pretty, pretty serious guy. He's got this awesome cape. He's got an awesome bolt gun. He's got a scroll of some kind. He's got a book that looks important. He's got a staff. He is a psyker. Um, so he has psychic abilities, which I'm sure this staff and this book may have something to do with that. He's got uh, some of the, the key things like uh, purity seals right here. Uh, and of course, a very, very angry looking face. Uh, gotta love that. Uh, let's take a look at another one. This is Inquisitor Karamazov. So this guy is above and beyond. I believe he is a witch hunter, and he's got a servitor hanging over here. He's got torches up on top of it. This is a robot, and he's sitting in the chair of this robot. It says Repentia uh, right here. He's got a guy over here scrawling things on, on all these scrolls, telling you how many things you did wrong. Um, and the thing that, that stands out to me is this big honking gun right on the side, which this servitor is is commanding. Uh, this guy effectively is is a computer for uh, operating this this gun. Uh, pretty wild stuff. Uh, we have Draxus, which we saw on the previous screen. Again, this is Shang, an alien pet that she's using. Uh, we've got an awesome alien skull that she's taken as a trophy. She's wearing a really cool set of uh, power armor. And she's even using an alien pistol. Uh, this thing right here, which is uh, kind, of, kind of unusual. So uh, it's got a, a purity seal right over here, but it's clearly an alien weapon. And that's the thing, is that some Inquisitors are very 
cut and dry, very puritanical. They, they follow the rule of the imperial law as best they can. Some are more radical. They're willing to use their enemy's weapons uh, against them. Um, and uh, to fight fire with fire, you could say. So she's she's a little bit more radical. Maybe maybe her Inquisitor allies uh, maybe don't don't look at her with, with such favoritism. Uh, this is Inquisitor, Inquisitor Kodiaz. He's got this awesome, actual living double-headed eagle. He's got a really cool thunder hammer and a suit of uh, uh, power armor. He's got a really cool book over here. Uh, again, he is part of the Ordo Malleus. He's there to uh, hunt demons, and he's looks pretty ready to squash them. Um, so there's, there's another, uh, example right there. We're going into Inquisitor Greyfax, who I believe is the, uh, a witch hunter Inquisitor. Uh, she's got this awesome hat that kind of, uh, comes from, you know, maybe inspired from some old timey sort of things. It's even got a candle on it right there. Uh, it's, she's got some pipes coming out of the backpack that powers her armor. And she's got this, this bolt weapon that looks partially like a crossbow across this. And yet it has a drum mag. Uh, over on the side. She's got a sword here, and awesome capes, plenty of purity seals, and all sorts of things, things like that. There's even a grenade uh, right there. So these Inquisitors, I'm sure that you're noticing, tend to be well kitted out, well armed, well armored, and very different from one another. Let's take a look at some more. Here's Solomon Locke. I don't know a ton about him, but he's got some of the staples of being an Inquisitor. You know, he's carrying around some different devices. He's got a really cool sword going over here. He's got the symbol of his of his office, and this guy's wearing a whole robe. He's got this uh, mysterious hood with all this text running down uh, the uh, the trim of it as well that looks a lot uh, like a lot of really great detail. Uh, here's another Inquisitor, Hector Rex. This guy's got an awesome uh, symbol of his office uh, right up here, another really cool sword, some really dense power armor, and he's even wielding a shield. Here's another uh, purity seal that we'll see uh, quite a lot of on, on a lot of these Inquisitors um, as we go along. And he's even got this really cool respirator on his face. Very uh, kind of reminds me, his face kind of reminds me of uh, the, the bad guy from the last Mad Max movie. I forget his name. Uh, this is a generic Inquisitor, so this is a man that's not named, but he's got a, uh, a Melta gun over here, an awesome cape, uh, another Inquisitorial symbol, and another sword. Pistol sword, that seems to be a pretty common, you know, a pistol, a ranged weapon, and a melee weapon, pretty common, uh, combination of Inquisitorial, uh, tools, so that they can, uh, you know, do damage in, in up close or at range. This guy even has a cybernetic on his face that looks like a, a cybernetic eye of some kind, which is really cool. Here's another generic one, another cybernetic eye, and another one of these witch hunter hats. This is an inferno pistol, so it's a pistol that happens to be a flamethrower uh, spewing flames. There's another uh, awesome cape. This guy has even got some stiletto needles uh, here in his uh, cape. Uh, ready to use at a moment's notice. A little bit less armored, but no less powered. You can see his sword is probably powered by these cables over here uh, that look really cool. So, those are the examples that I have of Inquisitor models that you can buy today. So, hopefully, this will also inspire you guys to see kind of the, the, the grand breadth of ways that you can make your own Inquisitor models. And you might be asking, well, why make an Inquisitor in the first place? Well, first of all, Inquisitors are very fascinating characters. This is called the uh, the Inquisitorial Rosette, uh, R-O-S-E-T-T-E, -E, I believe. And it is the symbol of in an Inquisitor's office. If, if you see this symbol and you're a regular Imperial citizen, this symbol should strike fear in your heart because... Uh, you are close to an, an Inquisitor that is likely looking for any sort of sign of heresy or, or alien influence or, or something like that. Um, and that's the thing, is that Inquisitors have that incredible authority, but they many of them don't use it willy-nilly, and it's not like there are a lot of Inquisitors. They tend to be rare. Many Imperial citizens will go their entire lives without even hearing about an Inquisitor if they're lucky. Uh, other themes that you'll see, Purity Seals. Here's a cute little thing uh, that, that Games Workshop put out. You can cut this out and stick it on something. Print it out on, on, your, uh, <laughs> uh, on your printer or something like that. Um, but Purity Seals are a way of uh, kind of purifying something or symbolizing that something has been purified. And that's part of an Inquisitor's job, uh, is to purify the heart and soul of the Imperium at large. So they, they make these really fascinating characters that can be uh, gruff 
or playful. They can be mysterious. They can be charismatic. They can be uh, very violent, or they can uh, try to strive for peace. Some Inquisitors will kill uh, anything that shows any hint of heresy. Others will try to use their enemy, uh, their enemy's own strengths against them, like a good detective, like a Sherlock Holmes. And that's what makes Inquisitors very interesting. Other tools of the trade, we've seen a couple of these, power swords. These are uh, blades that have a power field generated by a cable lung here. Sometimes they'll even have cables coming out the end of it to uh, an external backpack of some sort. But it's that power field that allows these swords to cut through just about anything as if it was butter. Uh, other weapons they tend to have, like the bolt pistol, a magazine-fed uh, pistol that fires rounds that are rocket-propelled, um, that explode upon impact. Um, this one is obviously very, very well decorated as well, so some of them are going to be a lot more simple, you know, with maybe just a, a flat uh, bit of, of paneling on this instead of all the, all the extra filigree, um, while others are... Uh, you know, much more decorated or, or enhanced in some way. Uh, Inquisitors also tend to have a retinue. This is another thing that makes them very interesting, is that they tend to be surrounded by interesting characters and interesting warriors, people that uh, have been sworn to them on pain of death or that they have gained as allies, such as these death cult assassins. Uh, you can see they, they use power swords here. There's another one of those little power cables there, and they're covered in purity seals. And these are assassins that have... Uh, studied the arts of death dealing uh, to an incredible extent and are very good at what they do. Uh, you have veterans, simple soldiers that are really good at what they do, and they will sometimes follow an inquisitor uh, for better or worse. People that are veterans of wars or veterans of gang uh, disputes or veterans of, of other sorts of uh, branches of the Imperium. Um, and so you have, uh, and they can come in all just as many range of, of shapes and sizes. Uh, you have crusaders, men and women that uh, have pledged themselves to a particular purpose to, to outdo the alien and the heretic. Uh, and you can see that his armor is very uh, resplendent in imperial iconography. Uh, you've got the inquisitorial symbol here. You've got purity seals and a big old shield and, and big old gleaming silver armor and, and such, uh, such like that. Very much the warrior type and very much a close combat sort of character. Uh, you have priests. Priests that believe in the very strongly in the God Emperor and believe very strongly in purifying the, the heart and soul of the Imperium, carrying along with them uh, chainsaw swords, chain swords. Uh, they may have rifles. They may have sacred texts that they carry and display into battle uh, to help purify demons and all sorts of other things. And they can come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. You have acolytes, people that are studying to be inquisitors. So here's a, a chap that's got uh, goggles and a big old uh, flamethrower here. You know, you might think it's just a pyre, but it, no, that's that's a handle. That that can spout flames, and this is probably a book of of uh, the religion or various rules. You've got the uh, inquisitorial symbol here and a couple other grim tools of the trade for interrogation uh, and things like that. A more grim idea of an ally that Inquisitor might bring along with them is a demon host. A demon that has been... Uh, slaved and chained to a mortal body so that they are stuck within uh, the the material realm and made to serve the Inquisitor. Uh, you can see Inquisitor uh, an Inquisitor symbol here, 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 uh, here as well, covered in Inquisitorial rosettes so that uh, they, they may be bound to the service of the Inquisitor, perhaps forced to speak the truth or answer questions or forced to use their psychic powers to the uh, service of the Inquisitor. Uh, there are also servo skulls. So these are actual skulls <laughs> that may not necessarily have much inside of them, but they tend to be equipped with a variety of tools, uh, mecha tendrils that can manipulate and scanners and sights and even uh, um, uh, invulnerable fields, force fields that may protect the Inquisitor uh, depending on the, the function of the servo skull. Very mindless, pretty much a hovering little robot. Uh, you also have a very unusual chap here. This is a Jokero weaponsmith. It is a genetically enhanced and hyper-intelligent orangutan. And you can see he's covered in technology, actually. Uh, he's got all these rings, and each of these rings is a digital weapon, a weapon that can shoot a laser out of it. These Jokero weaponsmiths do exactly what, what they say. They uh, maintain the weapons of the Inquisitor, some of them very simple, some of them very exotic. 
uh, and highly uh, difficult to maintain. But these guys are, are pros at that. Uh, you also have Arco Flagellants. So these are a very grim reminder of the punishment that may await somebody if they uh, perform some heresy. Uh, maybe even a mild heresy that they can potentially uh, uh, be captured for. Uh, but they're given all these flails and stimulants and cybernetics and collars and things. Um, and they are kept dormant for a while. And upon the utterance of a trigger word, they go into a berserk rage. Uh, and they will kill anything in their path. Um, so, very much a disposable tool. They are, they are penitents. They are people that have already committed some crime worthy of death, and, and instead of just killing them outright, uh, the Inquisition or the Ecclesiarchy has said, you know what, let's use that body and we'll, we'll put them to a purpose. Maybe they can do some good after all. Uh, so, that is uh, a the themes, right? The themes of an Inquisitor, the themes that that uh, the the Inquisitor brings with him. Uh, wow, my handwriting is garbage. Uh, maybe I'll try this a different way. Um, so you have kind of the the why, the uh, the the ideas, the concepts that surround an Inquisitor. So now you want to make your own, right? That's what this video is, is truly about. That's what this stream is truly about. You want to make your own Inquisitor that fits well within the Warhammer 40,000 universe and can do their job, have the tools that they need, perhaps have psychic powers at their disposal that they can use, uh, and be surrounded by their various allies. So what we're going to do is we're now going to take a look at the various models within Games Workshop that you can get that may be really, really good at converting your own Inquisitor. And I'm going to use this handy dandy pen to kind of highlight and, and doodle a little bit uh, on different parts of these models to kind of give you my ideas of, of things that you can swap around to make that model look truly unique. Um, so we're going to start with uh, going through Warhammer 40k models. So these are models that are um, available within Games Workshop that are already on the Warhammer 40,000 side of things. Some of them are not yet available, but will soon be available, such as this one. We're not really talking about this banner bearer, okay? This is really a very Sisters of Battle iconic unit that will be coming uh, soon, but the model uh, comes with this little lady, this little old lady, and she's carrying a staff, and this symbol you may have recognized from the Crusader. Uh, she is a priest, uh, a priestess, and you can see she's got some scroll work on her chest, and she's carrying some books here. Uh, she's already got a pistol holster, and she has this staff. So right off the bat, I'm looking at this character, and I'm thinking, well, fantastic. This is already, you know, ready to go out the box. You can uh, swap this head around probably for just about, you know, any head in the range. I have not yet seen the kit, but I imagine that this head will be a separate piece. If it is not, it's going to be a real simple task of, of clipping the head off and swapping it out with something else. Boom, you've got a nice kind of priestly feel Inquisitor that maybe is Ordo uh, Hereticus, uh, the Witch Hunters. Maybe you can stick a backpack on the back that has the, the power vents, uh, something along uh, that feel to, to make them look a little bit bulkier or some other tool backpack, something along those lines. Uh, another really, really good one is going to be a uh, Praetor from the Warhammer uh, 30k series, the Horus Heresy series. Now, this is a Space Marine, okay? But what strikes me about this Space Marine is that this armor is a very old set of armor. He's got a very unusual weapon here, um, and he's got a very old power backpack, power source backpack, okay? So already, Inquisitors have access to some of the best materials out there, but some of those materials best may not mean new. An Inquisitor could be equipped with a suit of power armor that uh, is ancient. And this kind of power armor just speaks that in volumes. The, the engraving that you have along the, the trim of the shoulder pad and the, the aquila, the eagle on the front of it and some of the trim around the legs. So this guy could be ready right out the gate. You could very easily swap out the weapon for whatever weapon you choose, the gun for whatever uh, gun you choose. And of course, this is a very Space Marine head that has uh, some studs here that are very kind of space marine -y. So I would say swap that head out with uh, a different type of head. 
uh, something that looks maybe uh, has a hat or, or hair or a helmet or, or something along those lines. Uh, the next one is another Forge World model. This is a Solar Auxilia uh, leader. He's already got the Power Sword. He's already got the really awesome cape. He's got these awesome epaulets, pauldrons. Uh, and he's got this excellent pistol right off the bat as well. So... I would say this model probably could be used right out the box for Warhammer 40k as an Inquisitor. He fits the bill perfectly. You can tell he's just covered in wealth, archaeotech, ancient uh, ancient stuff, uh, and, and is ready to be an Inquisitor. I would say maybe you could add some purity seals uh, or, or some other things along his cape. You know, a little purity seal along here. Uh, swap out the weapon for whatever weapons that you want, and then he's ready to go. So that's the great thing about some of these models. Uh, another one is going to be the Tempestus Scion. So this guy comes in a box of five with a bunch of extra uh, options in the box. I would say immediately swap out the head. This looks a little bit too military uh, to be a, an Inquisitor. Uh, but the coat is really, really cool. The pistol you can swap out for any weapon. He's got a servo skull uh, ready to go, which is great. A really flavorful piece uh, already on the model. And you see he's got a dagger here. Uh, that's a very, very clever touch. Um... Wouldn't do much. Maybe add some purity seals, maybe an inquisitorial rosette. I might even try to paint a little inquisitorial symbol on this uh, pad right here. Just to help sell the effect. Uh, but otherwise, really, a, another one that looks really good off the box. Obviously, not all the models that I show you will be like that. Some of them will be from the fantasy range. But for now, we're going through models that are, are you know, really good. That, that right out of the box, you could turn an inquisitor. This is a Sister of Silence. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, but already you can see kind of the, some of the signs that we've seen before. We've got uh, the Purity Seals, we've got big cool weapons, we've got golden armor, and stuff like that. But the thing that strikes, uh, there are a couple things that, that make this a Sister of Silence. One is going to be the style of this armor, and then the other is going to be the head. Um, Sisters of Silence typically have uh, shaved heads or these, these really high top-knot ponytails. I would suggest swapping that out. Um, just swap that out, maybe give her a different weapon, different pistol, uh, or something along those lines, and again, you've got an Inquisitor ready to go. Now we're getting into some that you're going to need to work on a little bit more. This is a Gene Stealer Cultist. A Gene Stealer Cultist, um, Magos, to be specifically. She's got these ridges on her head. Let me, let me zoom in here. She's got these ridges on her head that are very alien. This is a mark of her being an alien, okay? So right off the bat, you're probably going to want to swap out the head. Um, the next thing that you may want to do, or you may not, is swap out this, this blade. This is an alien blade. Now, obviously, there are certain uh, Inquisitors that will happily use alien weapons, so you might, be, you might be willing to keep that there if your Inquisitor has that. This right here is obviously an icon of the Gene Stealer cult, so you're going to nip that off. You're going to have to cut that off to make this an Inquisitor. And same thing with this. I recommend you swap this tip with perhaps uh, a big old hammer. Hammerhead. Just like that. Welcome, uh, Dawn and, and Blitz and Jade. Welcome. Um, Blender is, is great software. If you know Blender and you want to design your own model, absolutely. This is more showing you models that exist and then, how to con and then my tips on how you might go about converting them into an Inquisitor. But if you give this girl a different head that maybe has, you know, one of those cool witch hats that we saw in some of the other models, uh, chop off this, this symbol and then give her a massive hammer, that's probably all you really need to convert this into a, a cool Inquisitor uh, for your games of Warhammer 40k. Um, so this is the Gene Stealer Cult Magos. And you can tell she's got some really cool armor. She looks very uh, kind of resplendent with this, this crown and things like that. And a lot of that you can keep. This is the Nexos. This is a very curious guy. He's got a Gene Stealer Cult symbol kind of hidden up here. But this right here is a hologram table that's showing some structures um, for planning purposes. Now, nothing says Inquisitor to me more than planning out the kind of thing that they're about to accomplish. He's got a radio antenna here. He does have a very alien looking head. You can see he's got those ridges that I was showing off before. You're probably going to want to swap out the head. Easily done. Shave off the Gene Stealer Cult symbols. Give him some, some purity seals. Um, 
here, and then he's ready to go. Maybe you have on his back, maybe you can strap uh, a gun or other melee weapon uh, coming off of his back to show that he is armed and ready, that he's not just a backfield uh, operative uh, for his team. This is the uh, Drukhari, the Dark Eldar, Lemian. Now, this is uh, an alien, okay? She's got pointy ears, that makes her a space elf. Um, she has a, this very wicked poisoned blade, and, and Inquisitors are not above uh, using poison weapons. They will absolutely use these if it, if it suits their purposes. Um, so a lot of this you could probably keep as is. It's obviously a very kind of noble sort of sort of look, you know, this, this ball gown. Uh, a lot of these markings, like these in here, they are not sculpted on, these are painted on. So if you wanted to just leave this a, a solid color or add, uh, again, some purity seals uh, along this, that would be an easy way to mark this model as a fancy uh, formal Inquisitor. You may even want to go as far as to shave off some of these um, little, little spikes to make it maybe look a little bit smoother or something along those lines, but that should be easily done. This is an interesting model. So these are models from a game uh, called Blackstone Fortress, uh, another Games Workshop product. This, inc this model is a very pious uh, model. In fact, the name of this model is Pious Vorn. She's got a flamethrower that also has a chainsaw attached to it. And that's really cool. Uh... Another model you probably could use right out the box. A head swap might be a good idea. This one looks a little bit more penitent than an actual Inquisitor, but a simple head swap could uh, could do well. Um, and then you're, you're ready to go. Another great uh, thematic Inquisitor, not necessarily splitting up their weapons from you know one hand to another, but combining two weapons, for, ex for example, an Inferno pistol with a chain sword, and you're ready to go. Uh, let's see. We also have uh, Thaddeus the Purifier, again from Blackstone Fortress. He's got a servo skull that has a flamethrower uh, attached to the servo skull. He's also got a big old mace and a big text that, again, has this symbol of the Ecclesiarchy here and here. Now, this is a priest model, and it looks like a priest model. It has the symbology of a priest model. Inquisitors tend to be less preachers and more operatives. But this would be another model that you could convert to be more of an Inquisitor type model, if you so chose. Uh, one thing to do would be to take away this Pope hat, right? This may be a bit involved because I believe that the head is kind of part and parcel of part of the torso. Uh, but a little bit of shaving, uh, a little bit of, uh, of nipper work, and you should be able to get enough room to fit a different sort of head in there. Uh, perhaps a, a gruff, grizzled, bearded head or, or something along those lines. We also have uh, Espern Lucerno from that same box set. Now, this is a navigator. And you can tell he's a navigator because he's got this third eye. That's how he sees through the warp. Uh, so again, head swap makes a great Inquisitor. He's got this awesome staff. He's got this scroll work along here. Uh, it looks like he has a digital weapon on his hand. This, this ring could be a, a, a weapon that he's ready to, to bust out at a, at a moment's notice. Um, and this armor and cape, again, just look incredible. This is Janus Drake. He is a rogue trader. This guy looks pretty different from some of the models that we've seen. Uh, he's got this big old alien uh, carcass, this, this fur coat, I guess you could say. He's smoking a, a cool pipe. He's a chill dude. He's got the cybernetics going on up here, and he's got a really cool uh, rapier. Uh, a, a uh, sword that he uses to great potential. So again, uh, another model could be great out of the box. You probably don't need to do much conversion, but I would suggest add a purity seal. You can always add purity seals. Uh, he's also got this really great uh, Imperial Eagle going across his chest plate uh, that marks him as a, a, a member of the Imperium, but as a rogue trader, he has a lot more freedom. He's kind of a separate outlaw from the rest, but would also make a great Inquisitor model. And here's the last one from the 40k side of things. Um, that is, and I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Nayam Shai Murad. And she is another rogue trader. She's got a peg leg, but the peg leg is also a blade. She's got servo skulls that are helping to reload her pistols. Uh, she's got uh, an extra servo skull for targeting up here, and she has this awesome feather. Isn't that cool? Um, so another one, great, would be great out of the box. It does, she does have a melee weapon right here, uh, that is the, the a power sword most likely, uh, but excellent. Uh, a lot of this, I believe a lot of these swirls are actually part of the texture of the model. 
Um, so that would be a lot of fun to paint um, and make as, as intricate as you like. Okay, so moving along, we're going to go to models from uh, the Age of Sigmar. So this is Games Workshop's fantasy side of, uh, of their, their product line. And the first is a free guild general. Now here we're going to get into models that will require a little bit more, more work to make them look like they belong in the future setting of Warhammer 40k. You can see that this guy has a fantastic uh, great sword. It has this uh, wavy edge blade. He's got an awesome cap with awesome feathers. But there's nothing futuristic about this model, right? He's got some tights as well. So very, very tight pants because the tighter the better apparently and very poofy shoulders because the poofier the better apparently. Um, he does have some symbology here that is kind of the good aligned symbology of, of Age of Sigmar. Um, not difficult to, to hand wave or anything like that, but at the very least you're going to want to find a, a pistol holster from your collection um, to, you know, something that actually holds a pistol to stick on his side, right? Stick that on his side, uh, maybe attach purity seal, maybe get a, a, a servo skull that uh, is kind of attached to his back, uh, coming up over over the back of him, just to give him that more futuristic look. A lot of the models that we were looking at, they already had a little bit of that mix of fantasy and future, so it's really just a matter of pulling the future in to match this guy. Okay, uh, the next one on the list is Vendent. So this is a model that is not out yet, uh, but should be soon. Uh, this is a, a part of a father-daughter duo, and I'll show the daughter off momentarily. You can see he's got this awesome uh, torch. He already has a flintlock pistol, and he has a sword over here. He already even has a what looks like a purity seal right here. He's got an excellent leather holster and uh, even a vampire stake uh, sitting right there, uh, which is all excellent. Now, in order to convert this model, he, he's pretty good right off the bat. I would probably swap this pistol out with something that looks a little bit more futuristic and call it a day. That would not be difficult at all. I will also be showing off kits where you can get a lot of these bits that I'm talking about uh, a little bit further along. I'm just showing you the base model so you can get your own ideas as well. So that was the father. This is the daughter. She has a really cool crossbow that's full of these uh, these excellent bolts. She's got plenty more. And she also even has a big great sword on her back. Very fantasy, very little future, right? The thing that I might, I might try to do is swap her head out with maybe a female head that has some cybernetics in it. If possible, I might even try to swap out the entire crossbow with a rifle. Something with a big old magazine or power cell or something along those lines to give her uh, a more sense of being uh, a futuristic model. This is an interesting model from uh, a game called Underworlds. This is technically a chaos model. But if you're looking around, there's not a ton of chaos about her. This hand uh, obviously is glowing the, with a certain power. Um, and she's got some craziness going on with her hair. That's fine as well. You could probably pretty easily chop this off um, and just have her with a, a spiky, punky hairdo. That's totally fine. She's got a staff. This would be super easy to just chop that off and add, uh, you know, maybe chop it there and there and then add a blade coming up uh, along here or add a uh, maybe a mace tip something like uh something like that that uh that would give her a more uh, more futuristic look uh she's very lightly armored um that would be probably the tougher part to consolidate but she's obviously the psyker type right so you could use her as such perhaps she's gone a bit uh, uh she's gone to a a forest world or a jungle world and has been so entrenched into uh, finding this heresy that maybe she's gone a little bit native or something like that. Or maybe she's working with whatever tools that she has at her at her disposal. Or maybe that's just the kind of thing that she likes to wear. That's totally fine. This is a necromancer. Okay? Inquisitors can absolutely be grim, creepy, old uh, characters. Right? It's not even clear if this is a male or female. Because, yeah, it's balding, but who knows if this is a male or female head. Um, this staff could easily be swapped out for something a little bit more futuristic or something a little bit more resemblant of, of the inquisitorial symbol, uh, something, something like that. Um, you could, uh, keep this hand here or change it. He's got a blade, he or she has a blade sticking out right here, um, and the head can be swapped for something else as well. 
Uh, you could then maybe add some bits on the back, maybe like a radio backpack of some kind with some cables or a servo skull uh, hanging out of it. That uh, would be a good way to make this look really enhanced or upgraded uh, of some kind. A very easy thing to do. Okay, let me get rid of these lines here. There we go. Uh, this is a, an interesting one. This is a dark elf um, pirate. It's a privateer. He's got this really cool sickle weapon that he's got in his hand. This would not be difficult to swap out for a, um, a pistol of some kind. Uh, let's see if I can... There we go. Uh... There we go. Yeah, put a stick of pistol in his hand right here, a little little laser pistol of some kind. He's already got a, a really cool blade and a peg leg, a lot like that uh, rogue trader that we, we were showing off before. But he's got this excellent scale cloak that could be a great, you know, perhaps an alien trophy of some kind. Uh, stick a, a purity seal along the inside of this. Boom, you've got an Inquisitor. Excellent, excellent design. You may want to uh, swap out the head as well. You could, of course, keep this awesome wavy uh, uh, hair design. Or, you know what? You could probably chop off the head and leave him just kind of bald. Um, and that would be totally fine as well. Easily, easily done. This is a wild model. This is a mist weaver, okay? Now, some of the symbology on this model is actually a little bit troublesome. This is the symbol of Slanesh, which is a chaos god. Uh, so you probably want to chop that off. <laughs> Maybe chop it off right here. It could be a rogue Inquisitor, so perhaps they are willing to use uh, these things, uh, you know, use the warp against the warp. Uh, she's got this blade here. Uh, most of her armor is cloth. She's also hovering uh, above the ground on this these wisps of smoke. Um, but you, I would say at the very least, swap this head. Okay, swap this head for some other sort of uh, female head that maybe has a third eye or a cybernetic or something along those lines. They can help sell the idea that, that this is a model from the future. Here's a really different one. So remember the Ordi Ordo Malleus, the guy with the big hammer. This guy just screams that. He's looking at some uh, compass or some kind. He has a toolbox that he's standing on top of. He's already got a big hammer and some, uh, some scroll work along here. He's from the range of Stormcast Eternal, so already he's got the big armor look. The thing that I would probably do is add some stuff to his back, a, a power source, backpack, or something like that. I might even take off this whole sun symbol because that looks a little bit too much to me. You could leave it there if you like. I might also swap this hammer out with something a little bit more power hammery. A lot of power hammers or thunder hammers will have like a block that's, uh, that is the power source and then it will go into the hammer, which is a, a, a pretty easy swap to do. Uh, so there's another great model from the Stormcast range. We also have the Knight Shadow Stalker. So this is a very different sort of, uh, of look. This is, would clearly represent a Psyker. Again, I'd probably uh, swap out the, the head, or you could keep it if you like that sort of look. This staff is creating this shadowy effect all the way around. And then swap this hand out with a gun. Have a, a needle pistol of some kind, something long and graceful that kind of matches the rest of the look. Maybe have, uh, maybe cover this with uh, uh, a uh, a purity seal, or maybe these chains swap them out with uh, with purity seals here to give them that sort of mystical assassin type look. Now we're going to come to uh, another Warcry model. These are from the Cipher Lords using some sort of wild uh, chemical uh, gas grenade or something like that. This is a bladed fan. Uh, this head has these uh, three massive uh, ponytails coming off the, the helmet of it, which is pretty wild. Uh, and it already looks very mysterious. Uh, this is all just part of the painting, this, this scroll work along the side, along with these wavy lines. So you could paint these in any way you want. All this blank area is great surface to add pistol holsters, to add purity seals, to add wires or other components that you might find uh, to help uh, give this the look of, of being an Inquisitor. Oops, there we go. This is a Stormcast Sequitur, uh, another Stormcast model. Put a, a Purity Seal here instead of this Thunderbolt. Already has a vial of some liquid, a big old shield of some sort. The shield, I think, is probably going to be the weakest part of this model, so you may want to swap... You, you could swap this entire arm out. Take away the arm and, and the shield, get another power armored arm that has a pistol of some sort, and then keep the hammer. 
Why not? That's a really cool looking hammer. Swap out the hammer if you want. It's kind of, it's going to be difficult because it's leaning on the, the shoulder pad, uh, but e pretty easy to swap out if you really put some extra work into it. Uh, this is Velus von Fane from a new series of vampire models. Um, and I actually just put one of these models together. Uh, the head and this whole sword and arm are all part of the same piece. That's good and bad. She's already got a very graceful weapon. She's already got really graceful armor and things like that. What you would need to do is find another humanoid arm that would have a pistol of some kind. Okay? Get her a pistol, get her a different head, Inquisitor, right off the bat. Not tough to do. Uh, and those are the Age of Sigmar type models. We do have uh, a bunch of other models from Necromunda. Now, this is a game of gang warfare, and I'm starting with these guys because I think that they are some of the coolest. Uh, these could be some of the Acolytes or even the Inquisitors themselves. This guy has a, a crazy snake-like tool. This is, this is a model kit that's going to be out soon. Uh, not out yet, but out soon. Um, and already is, is very upgraded, has a lot of the, you know these, these wonderful pipes. This is a Psyker-type model that's been enhanced with these various arms. You could easily swap out these mechanical arms with guns or maybe the ends of maces or leave them as is. Very, very cool like that. You do want to maybe add in some inquisitorial symbols, maybe either painted um, onto their robes or add some purity seals or something along those lines. I think that would be really, really easily done and a great way to make your own inquisitor. Here's some more Delac models. Uh, these are uh, some, like, assassins that are already ready to go as well. This guy has a bunch of cybernetics. A lot of these Delac models are going to have cybernetics in their head that all look very, very similar. They're all going to have their replacement eyes, um, and they're all going to have bald heads. So you can keep that if you like it, or you can swap it out with another kind of head that maybe looks a little bit different depending on your style. Here is a, a guy right out of the Delac kit, the basic kit. He's got this silenced... Uh, gun right here. He has a staff that has a snake and skull tip to it. He's got cybernetics all out the wazoo, a rebreather, a bunch of blades along here, uh, and a pistol at his hip as well. So this guy is really well equipped. Again, <clears throat> just needs a slightly different paint job, maybe a bit of uh, a purity seal action or a servo skull coming out his back, and he's ready to go. Another kind of gang in Necromunda is the Van Sar. Now, these guys are very technologically adept. They have a lot of really high-tech gear, uh, you know, like this uh, flamethrower here, flame pistol or plasma pistol. He's got a, a mechanical arm coming out his back. He's got this arachnoid-type helmet uh, uh, and another mechanical arm. He's ready to go, but you may want to tone down some of that techie aspect or tone down some of the bug-like aspect, depending on the style of model that you're going for. Perhaps you re replace this kind of really smooth gun with something a little, a little bit bulkier. Perhaps you put a servo skull at the end of one of these mechanical arms. Here's another Vansar model again with a very high-tech gun and even what looks like a very high-tech mace. Those could be, again, replaced with something a little bit more low-tech. Uh, he's already got this really advanced bodysuit, which I think works very well for an operative that's used to working in, uh, in the field and things like that. Uh, we also have the Orlock models. These guys are a little bit more rough and tumble, uh, but he's got a big old kind of old style power fist and he's got like a hand shotgun or something along those lines. I would say maybe go for an older type uh, type head. Um, generally Inquisitors, if they're good, get old, right? Inquisitors, if they're really good at what they do, get old. That doesn't mean that you can't have a young Inquisitor. Absolutely, you can have a young Inquisitor. Or maybe you have a, an Inquisitor that's a little bit more vain and uh, likes to just maintain their appearance or something like that. So maybe a young head would be perfect. Or maybe have a head that has more cybernetic enhancements or something like that. Uh, this guy definitely needs some, some more purity seals on him. You know, you can even add one to his gun or something along those lines just to give him that, that aspect that he works for the Imperium and not for an underhive gang. Cawdor definitely has this religious feel to it. This is a gang that is hyper-religious. That They work in the slums but of Necromunda, but these models are replete with wonderful uh, iconography. They've got candles on their heads, on their staves. They've got bones sticking out and things like that. This guy's holding a hand flamethrower uh, and he even has some cybernetics, some, some lenses in his head. Um, obviously, this could represent an Inquisitor that's been 
out in the field for too long, <laughs> maybe needs a chance to, to rest and take a shower or something like that or get some new equipment, you could replace this staff with just about anything. Hammer, blade, uh, turn it into a, a pike that, that uh, of whatever kind you want. Uh, I would maybe add some sort of powered backpack um, or something like that to his back uh, just to give him that more techy upgraded feel. Escher, on the other hand, they deal with exotic drugs um, in Necromunda, but would make for an incredible model for an Inquisitor. She already has this coat. You can see the, the kind of um, uh, collar of the coat here. Um, has a really exotic bolt gun uh, with some iconography on it as well, and a massive whip that would not be difficult to replace with a regular blade or a mace or whatever else you wanted to equip her with. Uh, again, just needs a little bit more purity seals and you're ready to go. The Enforcers, on the other hand, are the police of Necromunda. Now, this symbol here is the symbol of Necromunda, but it would be so easy to just paint in an inquisitorial symbol there and call it a day. Uh, this, uh, this woman is already uh, tech upgraded. She's got this great pistol here. Uh, she's got uh, a, a sight rangefinder here of some sort. Um, she's got a radio antenna on, on her side, and she even comes, this model comes with, if you buy it from Forge World, a cyber dog, which is super cool. Uh, I think that's, that's really excellent to have. And again, paint an inquisitorial symbol right here, and you're ready to go. Uh, I don't know if there's necessarily rules for the cyber dog, but why the heck not? Why the heck not? Uh, okay, we also have, uh, another model from Forge World, another Necromunda model. This is a rogue doctor. If you're familiar with uh, Cyberpunk, they're kind of like the, uh, the, the quick fixers, or, or, or I forget what they call them. Uh, but they, they fix you up, they enhance you with cybernetics and things like that. But there's no reason that this can't be an Inquisitor as well. Uh, he's got gloves that he's, he's preparing for surgery. Any of these tools could be replaced with weapons. He's already got a servo skull over here. He's got a bunch of syringes over here. Uh, you could keep this saw blade or replace it with a mace or a blade of some sort. He's got this awesome Plague Doctor mask. This guy, again, is another model that could be ready right out of the box. Necromunda, also known for a variety of bounty hunters. Another model that works very, very well. Uh, this guy has a canister of some sort. Could be a... a uh, an explosive that he's getting ready to prepare. He's got an exotic laser weapon here and a very interesting helmet that not only keeps him mysterious, but also uh, protects him and perhaps is like a radar dish of some sort. Add a purity seal and you're ready to go. I know I've probably said that a dozen times, but that's really as simple as it gets. This is a model that they actually just revealed today. I had to go online and, and add this uh, into this, this stream document um, before the stream because it's a great model for an Inquisitor. <laughs> Look at how ornate this model is. This is going to be coming soon. She's got an exotic laser pistol. She's got a, an exotic uh, servo skull. In fact, she has two of them. Uh, she's got a power sword. She has awesome um, armor that has a, an excellent uh, Imperial uh, Eagle on it. She's already got the purity seals. What more could you want out of an Inquisitor? You're ready to go. Throw her into your games of Warhammer 40k and you're good. Uh, there is another noble uh, that could be used for this. This guy obviously is carrying a bounty, but this could be his uh, symbol of office instead. You could paint it. He's got cybernetics hidden in his big mop of hair. Uh, he's got purity seals. He's got a pistol. Uh, and I believe he has a sword on his back as well. So this guy, again, ready to go. Uh, going from a member of the Imperial Nobility or Bounty Hunter to being an Inquisitor. There are more models. I'm going to show you guys now some models that, unfortunately, are no longer sold through Games Workshop. But if you're lucky, you may already have them, or you may be sitting on them, or you may be able to find them through a third-party website. You may be able to find them through eBay, um, or, you know, Etsy, or something along those lines. Um, and we're going to go through those real quickly. Some of these are actually old Inquisitor models, such as this uh, girl right here. So if you need more inspiration for more Inquisitor models, here's some right here. Uh, she's got this excellent rifle that's actually a, fl uh, a flamethrower, which is excellent. Uh, she's got a staff. She's got the, the Inquisitorial symbol right here. Uh, looks like she has a staff on her back as well. Ready to go. There's another purity seal right there. Uh, here's another guy. He's got a book full of the Inquisitorial symbol. An old model. These were, uh, old metal models. I believe they were made in resin at some point as well. Um, he's already got a bolter that has, uh, the Inquisitorial symbol on it, which is great. 
Another one, another one of these, uh, these tall, uh, posh dames. Uh, she's got a mace and a plasma pistol. There's that, uh, plasma pistol with the coils. It even has this, uh, fleur de lis, uh, symbol on it as well. An excellent, excellent old model. Um, another one, she's got a, uh, power sword. Here's a, a, a really cool thing. This is a bolter that actually is a crossbow as well. I believe that they call it the Condemner Bolt Gun, which is a really, really cool thematic weapon. Uh, another old model, Bolter, looks a little bit more exotic than the rest, a, a power sword, a little bit more exotic. A type of helmet that we don't see very often in Warhammer 40k, this kind of knightly looking helmet. Um, he has uh, some really good uh, power armor and is ready to go. Now we're going to the models that I wish were not uh, discontinued because these are actually brand new models, uh, the next couple that I'm going to show you. This is a little bit controversial, these are Cursed City models. Curse City was a box set that they sold not very long ago, um, you know, a, a month ago or so. Um, and they came with a lot of really, really cool characters and heroes. Uh, this girl is a paladin. Uh, she, uh, Imelda Braskov, I, I believe, she has this big eagle pelt, uh, a big sword that could be a power sword. If you just put a, uh, a, a pistol holster right here, uh, let me draw that appropriately. There we go, something a little bit more like that. A pistol holster right here, she's ready to go. Uh, paint uh, an inquisitorial symbol on her robe, and you have uh, a great inquisitor. Probably add in a few more details that would ha help her look a little bit more techy, uh, and she's good to go as well. Uh, there's also this priestess. She already is very mysterious with this uh, cowl over her face. I would swap this uh, staff out with something that looks a little bit more futuristic. Uh, she has these extra weapons here. I'd probably maybe shave this pouch down and replace it with a pistol holster, and then she's ready to go as well. Um, I believe her model does have, um, these runes along these tassels are carved into the model. Um, so you may want to fill those in with, uh, maybe a little bit of, uh, uh, epoxy, um, or just paint them however you wish. Totally up to you. But, uh, another model that if you can come across, it would be easy to convert into a, an Inquisitor. Another Cursed City model, this is Glorio. Uh, he's already got sword, coat, armor, pistol. He's ready to roll. Uh, add in a, a purity seal, and you've got a really great Inquisitor that has a bit of style as well. What's really cool about him, he's got this posh bit of hair, uh, and he's also got a mirror, you know, to make sure that his, his immaculate mustache is always in, in good repair. Uh, the Cursed City Witch Hunter. Uh, you've seen this Witch Hunter cap in some actual Inquisitor models, and he's got this rifle on his back that uh, has a stake launcher. Now, you could probably just nip this stake off if you wanted to and have it represent kind of a grenade launcher sort of thing. Or heck, keep it there uh, for your demon hunting needs. He's also got a bunch of other weapons. He's got a sword on his back. He's got a dagger here. He's got a hammer in his hand. And he's got vampire stakes right here. He is a vampire hunter in Cursed City, but for, uh, for the Inquisition, he could be an excellent witch hunter. This is a little bit different of a guy, but Inquisitors are... Uh, you know, need to be up to date on their lore of the arch enemies that they fight. So this guy's covered in, in books. He's got lots of books and scrolls. Nothing says he can't be an Inquisitor. Again, Purity Seal, ready to go. Swap out this staff with, uh, you know, a mace or a hammer or something like that, and you can have a, a guy uh, that's ready to roll. You could have a, a servo skull coming off of his back um, that could be an extra weapon or pistol uh, or scanner or something like that, and, and he is good to go. Another Cursed City model. This is a, um, a discontinued Witch Hunter model that was not for Witch Hunters in Warhammer 40k, but actually Witch Hunters in Age of Sigmar. You may have been confused because he does have a Purity Seal, he does have a pistol, and he does have a sword. He also has an excellent hat with feathers on it. This guy would be good right out the box if you can find this old model. I believe he was in plastic. Um, so if you can find this model, I, I highly recommend it. Excellent model right out the box. Uh, this is a model from an old box set for a rogue trader. Uh, uh, Eluc Elucidia Vane, I believe her name was. Um, it was for Kill Team that was released a couple of years ago. It was a big box set that had rogue traders versus uh, these infected zombies. And she would make a great Inquisitor out of the box as well. She's got a thin sword at her hip. She's got this awesome pistol. She's got a mysterious face with cybernetics. She's got awesome feathers, because why not? And she even has right here uh, an Imperial symbol right there. Now, she's actually a rogue trader, but rogue traders and Inquisitors are kind of just two sides of the same coin, in my opinion. 
Uh, you can add a purity seal on her if you want and, and have her ready to go, but she would be ready out of the box. And just to show you, this is her warband that she comes with. And a lot of these would make great acolytes or inquisitors. You've got this guy right back here that looks like a gruff sergeant that could be an inquisitor. You've got this guy that's a tech priest. Another potential uh, opportunity. Uh, this death cult assassin is actually carrying the head of a zombie, uh, but could be made into your own character as well. Uh, I like this guy. Um, he's got his head out, or his hand out to, to warn off his allies. A rifle at his back and a pistol in his hand. If you put a sword at his hip uh, and maybe swap the head out, that could be a really good thing to do. So if you can find the Rogue Trader box set, you can get all these models, and then some. Um, along with, like, a whole game that you can play with them and then convert them at your heart's desire. It even comes with a doggo! Uh, a little Doberman that is uh, ready to defend uh, his, his buddies at a moment's notice. <clears throat> so I've shown you guys a lot of models, and I hope that you have a lot of ideas of things that you can use to convert. But now, how do you actually convert those models? Where do you find all these purity seals? Where do you find these pistols and these swords that I'm talking about? Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. Um, let me preface this by saying that you do not have to buy the full kits of these. You can go out to third-party websites and you can buy individual bits. Uh, if you look up Warhammer bits of some sort, you'll come up with a lot of different websites. Some are based in Europe, some are based in North America. Use your best judgment. Get your parents' help if you're under the age of 18 and you don't have your own money yet or something like that. Um, you know, make sure that you're using the internet responsibly. You can check eBay, and then, of course, you can also ask your friends. If you're getting into the Warhammer community, um, I would encourage you to check with your friends to see if they have any of these bits that I'm going to go through, okay? Because they may have bits that they're not using that they may be able to willing to give you or sell you or something like that for cheap. You may also be able to plug into Facebook groups or Discord groups. Use them responsibly. Again, if you're underage, make sure you're using, you're getting your parents' permission and using those responsibly. I don't want anybody getting hurt over Warhammer. That's the last thing that I want. Um, but here are some of the bits that you can ask for. The Sisters of Battle kit, the Battle Sisters box, is amazing for bits for converting Inquisitors. It comes with a lot of purity seals, it comes with a lot of bolt guns, it comes with a lot of power weapons, and a lot of ranged weapons, pistols, and even uh, the crossbow uh, bolt gun that we've seen on a couple other models as well. So, one of these could kit out an entire uh, uh, band. They even come with these uh, cherubs, these little weird baby servo skull angels that you can attach to your Inquisitor, or have following along. Um, excellent, excellent kit for a lot of that. Now, the weapon, the hands are a little bit more slender, so if your Inquisitor has big, bulky power armor, maybe the pits won't work well for this, but if you want a female Inquisitor or a more slender Inquisitor of some sort, this box would work great. These Skatari Rangers, the Adeptus Mechanicus Rangers, is another great box set. They come with a lot of these great backpacks. You can see these radio antennas sticking up off their backs. Those are these really techy backpacks that they have that you can stick to just about any of those fantasy models and instantly have an Inquisitor. Uh, they also have a lot of really exotic weapons, including these pistols and maces, um, and a great wealth of heads, including these hooded heads and cybernetic heads that would make great conversion material. Uh, half the heads are hooded, half the heads are helmeted, and there's a few other types of heads as well in this kit. Um, if you have a friend that plays Adeptus Mechanicus, uh, as an army, they likely have tons of these bits. Uh, the bits tend to be expensive online because they're very popular to have for conversion material, so keep that in mind. The Tempest, and, uh, the Tempest of Scions also have a lot of really good bits, some very military-style armor and weapons. Uh, military-style, you know, very bulky, very stocky chain swords and kind of exotic las guns and things like that. They also have these really great helmets and backpacks. Uh, that you can use to swap out for other things uh, on your Inquisitor. They have some helmetless heads as well that would be great. Uh, some of them are a little bit more militaristic for my style, but, you know, if, if your Inquisitor likes to be a little bit more militaristic or likes to ally with the, mil the various militaries uh, of the Imperium, go for it. Absolutely. This box set has, has absolutely tons of, kits, of, of bits in it. Um, the Gene Stealer Cults kit. This kit is a little bit different. Um, it's an alien kit. It is for the Gene Stealer cults that are very not friendly to the Inquisition. 
but each one of the, these guys could be converted into an acolyte. If you swap out this banner for a banner more Imperial-like, you've got a great banner. Some of them have uh, these really cool masks and helmets, including uh, these goggles and things like that, that kind of cover up the more alien features and could work for an Inquisitor very, very well. They also do have a lot of exotic weapons, like this web pistol uh, and this pickaxe and a couple other things besides. If you're diligent and you shave off these little uh, little symbols here, the Genesis of the Cult symbols, and replace them with Imperial symbols, those could any one of these guys could make a great Inquisitorial uh, agent or an Inquisitor himself, as long as you just put a little bit of effort into, into converting those bits. The Grey Knight's Kit is an excellent thing to have. Um, if you're doing a Demon Hunter Inquisitor, you probably want to have a box of Grey Knights anyway. But if you're just looking for bits, this kit has tons of hammers that already have the Inquisitorial symbol on them. They have halberds, they have blades, they have uh, pikes, they have flamethrowers, and they even have hands that are holding the heads of demons. Nothing gets cooler than that. <laughs> this kit also has tons of purity seals that you can stick on any of the other models. So there's lots of options in the Grey Knight's kit, even if you build the Grey Knights as they are, as the full kit, you're going to be left over with a lot of bits that you can use. The Necromunda Enforcers is another great way to get some bits. Again, these models could be used entirely as... Uh, apologies for my phone. Uh, they could be... Any one of them could be an Inquisitor. They have some of these really great, gruff, you know, stern police-type heads. These great helmets. They've got lots of exotic bolt weapons and things like that. Uh, pistols sniper rifles, they've got these maces here and stuff like that, they've got shotguns, lots of things that you can use to convert an Inquisitor. Um, and a lot of these other Necromunda kits are perfect for this as well. We've seen this guy before that has this awesome staff. If you just wanted this staff and you want to take that staff and put it on a different model to be an Inquisitor, boom, you're set. They've got a lot of silenced pistols, they've got a lot of daggers, all sorts of things that you can use. Sticking with the trend of Necromunda, these are Goliaths, and they have a lot of really excellent hammers, axes, big bulky guns. So if your Inquisitor is a guy in power armor, or you just want a bigger, bulkier guy, or you want your Inquisitor with like a bigger hand or something like that, um, then look at the Goliath kit. You know, you'll find lots of bits in there. The Orlok gang is more typical humans, but again, we've seen this guy. <coughs> um, you've got the... the Power fist that you could swap onto another guy. They've got blades, they've got pistols, they've got lots of, lots of very, very characterful heads that would be great for Inquisitors. Uh, a lot of them have masks and goggles, a lot of them are gruff older guys that, you know, would be great for any of the other Inquisitor models. Uh, some of them have more punky sorts of hairstyles, which is all excellent. The Cawdor kit is pretty great. Little bit different. They do still have some some uh, great models and, and opportunities here. Um, some interesting and different heads with some weird masks and stuff like that that could be great for a more grim, dark sort of feel to your Inquisitor. They do have pistols. They do have lots of different kinds of weapons and things like that. This guy even has a grenade crossbow. That would be difficult to convert onto an Inquisitor, but if you want to take on that challenge, go for it. Absolutely. It'd be awesome to see. The Escher kit is going to be really great. Again, if you have a female Inquisitor, or if you want a Laz pistol or a Needler pistol or something like that, this girl is, is wielding a big old chem thrower, big old flamethrower, and here's the tank of it, actually. Uh, there's a lot of plasma guns and, and daggers and different things like that in that kit. Um, and speaking of Escher, uh, there's actually a kit that Games, uh, Games Workshop just released that has a bunch of extra bits. And it's just bits. Uh, these faces match up with these hairstyles. Uh, to make different heads that you can use. Uh, there's lots of power swords, chain swords. Uh, there's lots of uh, different pistols, like these Needler pistols here as well. Uh, there's little hand flamethrowers. There's shotguns. Lots of different options in this kit that just came out. Uh, and the Goliath has have a, another kit like that as well. So here's a big bulky uh, arm weapon here. Here's a bunch of, uh, of the faces that, again, can be combined with these heads. They've got pointing hands. This hand has a cigar. Uh, big old axe. Uh, big old hammer, all bits that you can use to make your Inquisitor more unique or fit your style. Uh, you also have bits of the uh, Vansar gang. 
These are guys that uh, have a lot of the high-tech weapons and things like that. So we've seen this guy uh, before, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of other different kinds of exotic pistols, even shields with clear plastic that you can use. Lots of different heads as well. They could easily make a very gruff uh, inquisitor of, of whatever type you want. And then finally, a very unusual one, the Corpse Grinder Cults. Now, there's not a ton of bits, but if you have a friend that has built this kit, uh, there's a lot of really great pistols, very, very grim heads and things like that. This guy is actually wielding a big chainsaw on, a, on the end of a, a, a wire. Um, and lots of very scary looking bits that you can take if you want your Inquisitor to really spark fear in your uh, enemies. So, that is my presentation. If you are watching this afterwards, that's all I got for you. Um, you can obviously keep watching uh, my, my end uh, uh, regards, my epilogue here if, if you like, but uh, if you're watching this after the fact, then those are my ideas. Those are the kits that you can get, those are the things that you can look at, and those are my ideas for converting a lot of these models that are available, or maybe some that aren't, into really, really thematic and cool Inquisitors. Now, there's a wealth of models in the miniature market out there. There are models that you can 3D print, bits that you can 3D print. There's uh, all sorts of things over Etsy. There's a lot of Kickstarters and other, other game systems that you can pull bits from. I focused mainly on Games Workshop product because if you go and you play a game at a Games Workshop store or something like that, they will likely want your model to be mostly Games Workshop. And so that's why I focused on that. Really no other reason. Again, not sponsored by Games Workshop in any way, shape, or form. Um, the... But I do want to reiterate that there's a lot of other things you can draw from to make your Inquisitor your own character. Um, there are even just straight-up Inquisitor models that you can 3D print if you so choose or buy from somebody else that has 3D, 3D printed them or get off of Shapeways or, you know, whatever is, is your, your style. There's a lot of bits like hammers and blades and all sorts of things that you can get from different bit site or 3D printed. So, you know, do your research. If you have a certain theme and you didn't see any bits that you liked that I presented here, go out into the wide world of miniature wargaming and find the bits that work for you to make your character your own. Uh, as I was saying before, the rules for a lot of this stuff are in this book, uh, The Psychic Awakening Pariah. And it has rules for psychers. It has rules for swords and axes and hammers, fire, uh, flamethrowers, laser guns, um, all sorts of different things that you can add on. So you can really make your Inquisitor feel the way that you want to make them. They can be a psyker or not. They can have psychic powers or not. That's completely up to you. Uh, and that means that your imagination is the limit. I encourage you to experiment, to try to fit things together. If you have already been playing Warhammer for, for a period of time and you have a bits box or you have a friend who has a bits box and is willing to, to share uh, or sell you bits, then go for it. Give it a try. Uh, try mashing some of these bits together. Um, get a bit of blue tack or sticky tack so that you can dry fit and test fit different pieces to see how they might fit together um, and get to making your own character. I really hope that this uh, this stream was informative. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. If you have other resources or other ideas, comment down below. Share that information so that people can kind of use this as a great resource, right? I don't care about the views. I care about getting the information out there. So I would love to boost up, you know, well-meaning comments that might, uh, um, you know, have really good information or resources for people that want to get into converting or building their own Warhammer 40k models for whatever purpose. It could be for Kill Team. It could be for just the joy of building and painting something unique. It could be for a game of uh, Wrath and Glory or Rogue Trader or uh, some of the other tabletop, uh, you know, role-playing games that, that are out there. Or it could be for somebody's force of, uh, of Warhammer 40k. Um... Any, that's the, the wonderful thing about miniature wargaming is that there's so many, so many wonderful options. Um, and I was just focusing on, on Inquisitors, but of course a lot of these models could be converted to become Dungeons and Dragons characters or Pathfinder characters or anything along those lines. They're 32 millimeter heroic scale, if that answers anybody, anybody's questions about scale. Uh, generally D&D miniatures tend to be a little bit smaller scale, uh, just to give you an idea. But again... 
have fun. Have fun. Let your imagination run wild. Throw some of these bits together. Um, I plan to make some of my own. Make an Inquisitor of my own style, and I will be posting uh, shots of that on my Twitter account. You can see that in the bottom uh, left-hand side, at Arlick Riley. Um, so feel free to poke over there and take a look at some of my other streams and other content and stuff like that. Um, but I hope that, uh, once again, that you found this informative. Thank you all of you that have uh, joined me for this. I, Padung, Tia Kun, Dawn, Blitz, and Jade, uh, and all the other viewers out there that have been uh, following me and chatting with me. Um, the last thing I, I want to do is, uh, uh, again, if anybody has any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll be sure to, uh, to reply down there. Um, but... Otherwise, thank you once again, uh, farewell, and I hope to see you all again very soon. Happy Wargaming, everyone! <laughs>